once again we welcome you to our Sunday worship. I hope the week has been good for you as well as it's been good for me. If you haven't been blessed in the Lord, maybe our call to worship will give you a little insight into the things that the church is all about. Our call to worship this morning is coming from the book of Revelations, from chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. And it reads, And to the angel of the church in Philippi write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, no man openeth. Verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Let there be a blessing to all the hearers of the word this morning. In Jesus the Christ's name, amen. Good morning, East Mount Zion members. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for sending your begotten Son down to die on the cross for our sin. We thank you for your plan of salvation. It's not your will that anyone should perish, but everyone should come into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus, Savior Christ. And Father, we just pray for our sick and our shut in. We pray for someone that's going through some other hardship, Lord, that your word will comfort them, that your word will lift up their spirit. And the Heavenly Father, we thank you for taking the sting out of death and victory over the graves. You said the harvest are plenty, but the labels are few. You want us to go out and witness and tell the world about your son, Jesus. Then Heavenly Father, you actually forgive us for all our sin. Even though we are saved, sometimes we make mistakes and sin, but you are forgiven, God. We lift you up. We magnify your name to Heavenly Father. You are holy and you are worthy. And Father, we just pray for all of the Christian throughout this country, dear Heavenly Father, that they will let their light shine so men will see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Our adversary, Satan, like a roaring lion, going to and fro, seeking, seeking he, he can devour. And dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word to be a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. You told the disciples that men will know you by your love for each other. You want us to exercise that same kind of love among ourselves. And to Heavenly Father, we pray that we will cope with COVID-19, to Heavenly Father, that we will be safe. And we will pray that the health organization will find a vaccine that will be effective, Lord. And to Heavenly Father, we just pray Thank you for everything that you have done, Lord. You have really blessed America, Lord. But it seems like America just want to go back in darkness. But he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, the heavenly Father, you have ascended to heaven, set on the right hand of the Father, making an ascent for us. And we have that blessed hope, Lord, that one day you will come back for your saints. In Jesus' name, amen. good to us. I said the Lord has been good to us in spite of all of what we're going through. His grace and his mercy allowed us to be here today. It wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't your efforts. It was just the grace of God. Brothers, we're going to go back what we come from, that what has brought us here. A lot of times we have gotten away from the roots 
and the foundation of what we have come to as a people. Will I know I've been changed? I, I know I've been changed. I, come on now. I know I've been changed. Ruby Vache, and I am a member of our courtesy committee. I'm here this morning to welcome you to our live stream broadcast. We want to take special time to thank you because during these times, with a click, with the push of a button, we are able to enter into all the church services anywhere. So we're giving you a special thank you for joining us. Here, we're still building the kingdom by spreading the love. We're reaching out into the community, doing what we can when we can. You're welcome to join us. You can join us. We want you to join us. How? Call the church 
Go to our page. You'll find out how, when, and where. Our pastor, the Reverend Brian Cash, is teaching and we're learning how to become a better church. Please join us when he opens the doors to the church. If you do not have a church home, join us. We'd love to have you with us. Thank you, be blessed, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Hello, East Mount Zion, bringing you greetings from Dallas, Texas. This is the Curtin Brown family. Uh, in the back, you see Kim and Kylan, who are now married. So Mrs. Nickerson and Mrs. Cody. And you see our grandchildren with us, three of the four grandchildren. We are so happy to participate in the 64th anniversary celebration homecoming for East Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We love Sunday school at East Mount Zion. From the time my mother was a child, for myself, for my daughters, and now our grandchildren, Sunday school was very important to learn God's word and to hide his word in our heart. Thank you, East Mount Zion. And it's also an opportunity to pass along the, the legacy of a Christian faith from one generation to the next. So from Sandra's parents to us, and then from us to our children, and now to our grandchildren. And they have a scripture memory verse they would like to say. Elliot? Uh, John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we not know where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father, but by me, John 14, 1 through 6. Psalms 34, 14 through 19. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open until they are cut. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Do cut up the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear and learn with them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalm 34, 14 through 19. Number 6, 24, 25, 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Matthew 22, 37-39 Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. Matthew 22, 37-39 Sunday school is very important. Thank you, East Mount Zion, and congratulations. God bless. Hey everyone, this is Pastor Brian Cash, and I'm so grateful uh, that I am right here on 89th between Cedar and Quincy. We are in the Fairfax neighborhood this morning. This is our Lifeline Day, and we have the opportunity to engage some of our community partners, hand out food, hand out all kind of different things like hand sanitizers, hot meals. You know, this is what God calls us to do. He calls us to be outward focused. To be outward focused is to be outward and go outward into the community. Scripture, scripture teaches us to go ye therefore into all of the world uh, to share that gospel. And that gospel is a social gospel. It is a community gospel. It is a gospel about a Christ that saves everybody. And that's where we are. We're right in this community. And so I really wanted to encourage you, those of you who desire to be partners with East Mount Zion Baptist Church, this is the most best and, I, and, and, and the most opportune time uh, to be a partner with our church on the screen.
screen right now, there are some opportunities or options for you to partner with us. You can give uh, through texting EMZBC to the number 77977. You can also mail in the gift and you can just say, I just want to give a donation or be a partner to East Mount Zion Baptist Church. Why? Because God is calling us as a church to go outward and that's just what we are. And you've seen some of the different things that we have done in giving out food, um, but that doesn't stop there. We have been able to engage with families on top of families on top of families. And so I'm, I'm just so grateful to be in this space and be right now uh, in this community. So again, uh, continue to pray for us. Uh, uh, continue to ask God that God guides us and give us guidance as we continue to lead and continue to go forth. Amen. Amen. Journey with me in prayer as we begin in uh, the word of God. God, we thank you that you have blessed us in ways we do not deserve. We thank you, Father, that you continue to allow us to be able to be examples in this world and during this season. We pray right now for every member of our church um, that is suffering with bereavement, suffering with sickness. We pray for those who have lost family members. We pray for those who are at home sick. We pray, O oh God, for our entire congregation, but we pray, O oh God, for our community. We pray, O oh God, for our city. We pray, O oh God, that we would continue to grow further in you. It is our desire, God, 
to grow in you and you grow in us. God, we give you thanks. We ask that you would touch this preaching moment, touch my mind and touch my tongue so that I may speak and share a word to your people, but speak only the words that you have given to me. And God will give you thanks and will give you praise. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are so grateful uh, that you have joined us today uh, as we continue with our series on Better Church. Uh, we are now in our fourth installment of, the, uh, of this kind of series of how the church can grow to become better. Uh, the Lord laid it on my heart the first week of November, uh, and the Lord said that the church is going to have to face obstacles and oppositions in the year of 2021 that they have never experienced before. And if the church is going to be able to embrace these challenges head on, the church has to grow. And the church cannot just grow on their own, but the church has to grow in God. And so uh, we started uh, this installment of sermons, of uh, sermon series on Better Church Series. And it was in the first Sunday of November, we talked about growing in the knowledge of God. We suggested that you cannot in the book of Philippians, you cannot grow in God or become a better church if you do not grow in the knowledge of God. And growing in the knowledge of God is accepting the challenge of God. That when God shares God's knowledge with you, God's knowledge always challenges you. And then the Philippian church, it challenged the Philippian church to love more abound, meaning reach your best mark. And understand that uh, your best mark is something that you are supposed to excel and go beyond. Never become comfortable with where you are, but always realize that there is a higher level that God desires to take you. And the knowledge of God reminds us also that as we are reaching that best mark and going beyond that best mark, we are supposed to uh, use God's discernment and not our discernment. Use God's words and not our words. Words. Follow God's guidance and not our guidance. And then we moved the following week in growing in partnership. We moved up from verses uh, in the first chapter of Philippians that talks about uh, Paul thanks them for their partnership in the gospel. And we said true partnership is not uh, simply saying you know, I'm partnering with God, that I'm dependent upon God or I am totally independent from God. But it starts with a interdependent partnership with God. And then it calls us to reimagine our partnership with each other. The Philippian church, although they were great partners with Paul, they were not great partners with each other. Uh, they were arguing among each other. And so they had to reimagine what it meant to be partners with each other. And then after they learned how to be partners with God, after they learned how to be partners with each other, they then had to learn how to be partners with community. Then we move from growing in partnership to growing in the wisdom of God through Christ on last week. That literally I cannot be better if I do not grow in Christ. And Christ is the human wisdom of God that then gives us what we need to be and what we need to do in order to be effective in the world. Christ is the very image for us that helps us become better. And the more I grow in Christ, the more I abide in Christ, the more I get connected to Christ, the more I become more like Christ and the more I grow even in the will and image of God. But I'm excited about this week. I'm excited about this week because we shift to Ephesians chapter three, verse 16. And today we are talking about growing stronger in God, growing stronger in God. I don't know about you. I need to go grow stronger in God. I am not where I need to be and I'm not where I used to be, but there is uh, a higher level for me to get stronger in God. And, and I don't know where you are in your faith walk, but each and every day my prayer is, Lord, make me stronger in you. Lord, give me a, a greater footing in you so that I can be who you have called me to be. Is that you? Do you want to get stronger in God? Well, good. Share this message with someone else because we're going to talk about how to grow stronger in God, growing in the strength of God. Ephesians chapter three, verse 16. Let's go there. 
It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Our question today is, what does it require of us to grow stronger in God? What do we need to do in order for us to grow stronger in God? Paul is preaching to a Gentile church in Ephesus. And although I shared before, although they are a part of the family of God, Although they have joined the church, they have given God their hand, they have given God their heart, they have joined the role, the church role, church membership role, they have started tithing, they have started joining the choir or joining this ministry and joining that ministry, many of them have become stagnated. Many of them have thought that to join the church was everything I need to do. That I don't need to do anything else but just become a member of the church. And from that on, I'm saved. Now I'm waiting on God to come back and I'm waiting on God to come and take me from here. That's how some people think. That literally when the Lord saves us, when we become a part of the family of God, we think that's all we have to do. But, but, but Paul says, this is my prayer. And I love the language of Paul. Paul says, I pray earnestly. I keep on praying that you grow or you are strengthened in the power of God. I love that because that's my prayer literally every day. My prayer is, is that cash does not become satisfied with where he is in his relationship with God. You know, there was a portion of time in my life where because I was preaching, I thought I was good. There was a portion in time of my life because I was sharing the word to people I didn't have to grow in my devotional life. I didn't have to grow in my spiritual life. And there was a portion in my life, a portion of time in my life where I would preach when I just started preaching and I would not pray every day. I would not read my word every day. There was a time where I read the word only to preach. And this was earlier on in my life until I learned the significance of a devotional life until I learned the significance of why I need to grow in God. And I recognized that some of the battles that I was having in my life was because I was not as strong in God as I should have been. Some of the obstacles that I kept falling into, some of the temptations that I found myself hitting the wall with was simply because I wasn't as strong in him. And Paul says to the Gentile church, yeah, you are in the family of God. Yes, you have joined the church. Yes, you are part of the church, but it does not stop there. There is growth for you. We've already been talking about other areas that our church needs to grow in spiritually, but being stronger in God and growing in the strength of God is so essential. And the question for us is, those of you who want to be like me, those of you who understand the significance of growing stronger in the strength of God, the question that we have to raise is, what does it require for us to grow in the strength of God? The first thing is, it's real simple. Paul says, you have to get in the right position. Listen to what Paul says. Paul says, I pray that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now, the word riches of his glory speaks to the flow 
of God's abundant virtues or abundant blessings that God wants to pour in your life so that you can become stronger in him. You see, riches here does not speak to wealth. It does not speak to money, although it includes that. But the riches here that Paul speaks about is not cash, cars or clothes, but it speaks to God's virtues that God gives to us that makes us stronger. What are God's virtues? God's virtues are patience, love, uh, joy, uh, happiness, peace. God's virtues are the very thing that makes us stronger. You see, if I just have my own patience on my own, I'm in trouble because I am one of the most impatient people you can ever meet. Uh, I'm driving down the street and I'm rushing and people are in my way. I'm impatient, but I pray to God, God, give me your patience. That's a part of the riches that God gives to us. You know, uh, God wants to share and, and give to you his love, not your kind of love, because if you love on your own, you will only love the folk that love you in return. But, but in order for you to become stronger in the strength of God, you have to have the love of God. You know, a part of God's riches are uh, the joy of God. You see, the, the joy of God is something we used to say uh, the world didn't give and the world can't take away. The joy of God is the very thing that allows you to get up in the morning when you don't want to get up in the morning. The joy of God is the very thing that allows you to smile at work even when your co-workers are getting on your nerves. But you don't have that joy on your own. You need God's joy and joy and love and peace and forgiveness and happiness and, and, and patience and all of the other things that God gives to us are included in the riches of God. And as well as money and, and wealth, God, that's a part of God's riches because God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But I want you to see what Paul is saying. Paul says, I pray that God would grant you his riches and his glory. Now the word riches and glory speaks, I told you, a flow of God's virtues, a flow of God's love, a flow of God's mercy, a flow of God's grace, a flow of God's peace, a flow of God's patience. But I want you to pay attention to this. You cannot receive a flow of of God's riches or a flow of God's virtues if you are not in the right position. It's kind of like a stream of water going downward. If, uh, if the, the very thing that is catching that water is not in position to receive it, then it will not receive it. It's kind of like this uh, cup, this, this container right here. You see, this represents God's riches. It's, it's God's love. It's God's patience. It's really whatever you need from God because I might need more patience, but you might need forgiveness. I might need peace, but you might need patience. It's really just what you need. And this represents God's riches. Now, this cup represents you. If God is pouring out his riches and you are not in the right position to receive his riches, all will happen is God is pouring out water. And now the water has gone everywhere, but it's not in the cup. But if you position yourself in the right place, you see how the water is going in the cup. That's the same way God pours out God's virtues to us. Now, the question you got to ask now is, how do I get in the right position in order to get what God has for me? What do I need to do? Well, in order for me to get in the right position, I have to, number one, be in the word of God. I have to be reading the word of God and I have to be asking God, God, would you tell me what you would like for me to do today? 
in order for me to get in the right position, I have to be on my knees in prayer. And when I'm in, in the morning before I leave for the day, I'm asking and I'm listening to God and I'm getting away from all of the things that hinder me from hearing God's voice. And now that I'm in the right position, now God can share to me everything I need. That's why Jesus says, go into your secret closet. And when you get into your secret closet, I want you to close the door because once I get into the secret closet, it is there God will flow God's riches towards me. I'm wondering this morning, how many of us have missed out on what God wanted to share to you because you were in the wrong position? You know, you can be in the wrong position having the wrong people around you. You, you can be in the wrong position with the wrong mentality. You can be in the wrong position thinking that God has to give you something and you are just waiting on God to give it to you. No, you have to be in the right position. The best position you can be in to receive God's riches is the position of prayer. The best position you can be in to receive God's riches is in the position of solitude. Sometimes the best place you can receive God's riches is to be in the position of serving and serving other people. You know how many times God blessed me with God's abundant riches by me just availing myself in serving someone else? You know how many times God blessed me as a result of just doing what God has commanded me to do? Being obedient to God's voice, listening to God's voice. God's voice tells me to do this. God's voice tells me to go there. God's voice tells me to be here. And because I'm listening to God's voice, I am in the right position to receive everything God has for me. Can I ask you a question? How many of you are in the right position? Because if you're in the right position, God will give you exactly what you need in order to become stronger in him. Maybe you need to become stronger in your patience like me. Maybe you need to become stronger in your love. Maybe you need to become stronger in your perseverance to be able to handle what you cannot handle on your own. But God is saying, if you want to become stronger in me, get in the right position. So not only does it require us to get in the right position, but it also requires us to have the right mentality. L listen to what Paul says. He says, I pray that God will give you the uh, give you his his riches and his glory to do what? To strengthen you with power through his spirit. He says, literally, after you get in the right position, this is the next thing you got to do in order to be stronger in God and grow in the strength in God. He says, you will be strengthened with power through his spirit. Strengthen comes from the word kratos, which means greatest and supreme power. We, we talked about this last week when we talked about uh, God's incomparable power that literally nothing compares uh, to God's power. But Paul says this, Paul says, when you get in the right position, God wants to strengthen you and make you stronger because God's strength is the only strength that can make you stronger. But notice how he says, you become strengthened in the strength of God. You become strengthened in the strength of God as you walk through life's adversities with his spirit. No, listen to this. We are made stronger through God's supreme power when we walk through life and life's adversities with God's spirit. I, I want to say that one more time because Paul says you are strengthened as you go through. That word through means you're walking. 
That, that, that word through means you're going, it's like you're going through a door. You are walking through something. You are not stopped. You are not stale. You are not standing still, but you are going through. He says, God wants to strengthen you, but you have to have the mentality that I am not stopping in the midst of my adversity, but I'm going to keep on walking through life with God's spirit. I'm walking through, but in order to walk walk through adversity. Catch this. You have to have a mentality to keep on walking. You have to have a mentality like David in Psalm 23 who said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff is there to comfort me. I really want to take my time and really preach this to you because what I've learned is is that you do not become stronger in God uh, when you stay still. You become stronger in God when you keep on walking with God. My, my wife and I were in the gym the other day and my wife was doing sit-ups. And my wife started feeling the burn in her belly and in her abs. And my wife stopped and I said, baby, keep on going. K keep on pushing. Because it reminded me of a time that I was doing sit-ups and I was in the gym working out and the trainer said, uh, keep moving and keep on going. And I looked at that trainer and I said, ma'am, I'm hurting. Ma'am, I'm burning. And you know what that trainer said? That trainer said, well, the only way you're going to get results is if you keep pushing through the burn. If you can get beyond the burn, you'll get the results you need. Can I suggest to you, children of God, that Paul says to the Gentile church, I know life is difficult. I know life is troubling. But what I want you to do is keep on going through life adversities with God. And guess what God is going to do? Listen to what Paul says, God will give you power if you keep walking through your adversity with his spirit. Now, I love the word power in this text because the word power comes from the Greek word, not which means God's supreme power, which means this is the is this is the this is the highest power one can have, and only God has that. But Paul uses another word for power here and for strength. This word is dynamus. It, it resembles that uh, uh, th that that phrase uh, from JJ from Good Times, dynamite. It is a dynamite power. You know what dynamite is. Is. They used to use it in the early 1900s to uh, push through caves and push through mountains. And that dynamite would move some stuff. That dynamite would push some stuff. In other words, what God says through the words of Paul, if you keep on pushing, guess what God is going to do? He's going to strengthen you with dynamite power. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is, is that if you can push beyond the burn, if you can push beyond your adversities, if you can push beyond your turmoil, if you can push beyond your tears, if you can push beyond your rejection, if you can push beyond your adversity, if you can push beyond the death, if you can push beyond the sickness, guess what God is going to do? God is going to grant you with dynamite power power to make stuff move power like what Jesus says he'll give you the power of a mustard seed faith that tells the mountain be thou removed power that says that even though you try to create all kind of systemic realities that hinders us from voting we're going to keep pushing anyways and get you out of office that's some 
dynamite power. Dynamite power is saying that although the doctor has given me a bad report, I'm going to keep on pushing anyways. And when I come back to the doctor's office, the doctor is trying to figure out how in the world did that thing that seemed terminal, that, that sickness that seemed like it was going to take you out of here, it didn't take you out. And all you looking at the doctor is saying, well, God gave me some dynamite power. I, I, I really want you to understand this because there are some of us who get stuck in the rut. There are some of us that get stuck in the middle of our adversity and we do not keep pushing. We get afraid and frustrated. But God says keep on going. God said keep on walking through the valley of the shadow of death. God says keep on moving through your mountains. God says keep on moving through your valleys. God says keep on moving through your adversity. But catch this, you're not moving alone. You got the spirit with you. David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. In other words, Paul says, if you keep walking. No, you do not walk alone but because you got God's Holy Spirit walking with you and what the Spirit will do with you is the Spirit will guide you through your problems. The Spirit will push you through your adversities and when you get on the other side of your adversity, God will grant you with some dynamite power. I wonder who's in this place who's watching me today who ever gone through some adversity and now you know as a result of coming on the other side of the adversity. I'm stronger now. I'm wiser now. I'm better now because I have gone through the adversity and I didn't go through it alone. Even though my family left me, even though my friends left me, God never left me. And because he never left me, he granted me with power. Dynamite power. Power that allows me to keep on pressing. But, but not only do I have to have the right mentality to keep pushing through in order to be strengthened with God's dynamite power. And not only do I have to be in the right position in order to foresee the flow of God's riches. But then the last thing is, if I'm going to grow in the strength of God, I have to learn how to be inward focused. Notice this. He says, God will grant you God's riches and strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner man or inner person. Notice this. Paul says, if you get in the right flow, God will give you the riches of virtues that God wants to give you. And as a result of that, because you are walking through your adversities with these virtues, God will allow you to be granted with strength, with dynamite power. But, but notice all of this happens in the inner man or the inner person. Why? Why does this happen in the inward person of us, ourselves? Well, it's in verse 17. Verse 17 explains why all of this happens in the inner self. It happens so that Christ may dwell within our hearts. Remember this from last week when we talked about Christ, when we grow in the wisdom of Christ, Christ gets on the inside of us and Christ begins to give us new spectacles. Christ begins to give us new lenses so that we can see in the inside of our hearts and see the hope that God has for us. You remember that? Paul says, listen, this is what God wants to do. God wants to work and strengthen you on the inside because Christ desires to set up habitat. Christ desires to open up your heart and he wants to move into your heart. Heart signifies not the heart that we have on the inside of us, but heart signifies and speaks to our soul. It speaks to the inner 
most parts of our existence that man cannot touch. When you go to the doctor to have surgery, the doctor cannot operate on the soul because that's only where God desires to exist. But this is what Paul says. Paul says that you have to now shift from being outward focused, focused on what happens on the outside, focus on how strong I am on the outside, focus on how well I am on the outside. You know, church folk are outward focused. We come to church looking good, come to church smelling good, come to church with our best dress on, but are dying on the inside. And can I suggest to you, as Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians, that we are the temple of the Lord and God cannot dwell in a unclean temple. God cannot dwell in a temple that is not strong enough for God to dwell. And what Paul says, this is what I want you to do. I want you now to shift from focusing on what people think about you, focusing on what people see about you, and now focus on the inside. Because if you can get the inside right, the outside will follow. You know, that's why I'm not concerned about what people think about me on the outside. I need to be healthy on the inside. I need to make sure my mind is right. I need to make sure my heart is right. Because I got to make sure my mind is right. Because Paul reminds us in Philippians that this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I got to make sure my heart is right. Because Paul says, now that Christ wants to dwell on the inside of my heart. So if my mind and my heart is right, then that gives opportunity for God to come in and dwell and sup with me and start working on me and removing the stuff that God does not want to be inside of me. Uh, I got I to gotta shift. I have to shift my focus from not being so concentrated on the outside, trying to put on a show and let everybody know how good I am, quoting scripture and holding on to Bibles and looking like I got it all together. Sometimes you don't have to look like you got it all together because sometimes you ain't got it all together and it's okay not to have it all together. But what you are saying is God is is not finished with me yet, but when God gets done working on me, I'll be better than I am today. I don't know who that is for this morning, but God is saying, child of God, stop trying to put on the show. Stop trying to let folk think you got it all together. If you ain't got it together, it's okay. You have something else for God to work on. I want to let you in on a secret. None of us got it all together, and I want you to let you on into another secret that we will never have it all together because we are in flesh. Although we are spiritual beings, we are wrapped in flesh. And because we are wrapped in flesh, there is always something that we have to work on. But that's why we deny the flesh so that our spirit persons can be stronger. That's why we fast. That's why we pray so that God God may have a stronger temple. I know I want to be stronger, but I don't simply want to be stronger on this side. I want to be stronger on the inside. Lord, make me stronger. Lord, strengthen my inside because that's where Christ wants to dwell. That's where Christ wants to exist. And you cannot be weak on the inside, strong on the outside, because God cannot operate in you. L literally, brothers and sisters, Paul speaks to the Gentile church. And Paul literally lays it out. He says, if you want to grow stronger in God, you got to get in the right position. When you get in the right position, God will give you the very virtues to help you walk through adversity, but you got to keep on walking. You got to use these virtues to be able to keep on moving. And once you keep moving, God will give you dynamite power. But that power is not just for outside. It's for you to be inward focused so that you can continue to work on the inside. That that may be your task for this week. God, make me stronger inwardly. God, 
help me to become better. Because I don't want to have a facade where people think I'm good and people think I'm better, but I want to be better on the inside. Let's look at all in prayer. God, we thank you for this word. We ask of God that you would bless those who are watching, bless those who are going to experience this word, whether replay or watching live. I pray that you would draw them closer to you. I pray, oh God, that there would be something in this word that would help them draw nearer to you. I pray that they would become stronger in you because they have experienced your word. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Another one of those Sundays. Pastor did what it is that he does when the Spirit moves him. I hope the Spirit moved you at home. You hear that the pastor is talking about strength. That's what we need to do. We need to put some strength in what we do. But if you feel like you're a little weak, if you feel like you don't have strength within yourself, well, the reason is is because you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. You're not a Christian. So we're, what we want to do to now is we want to give you an invitation so that you can have the kind of strength that the apostles had, the kind of strength that the disciples had. You must be one in the Lord and able to have the kind of strength that you need as a Christian. You might notice this morning that I have on a Lifeline shirt. You see, that's one of the things that we do to reach out to the community. But each and every one of us that serve the Lord, we come to East Mount Zion to serve. We don't come because we made to come. We come because we're in love with the Lord. You too can have that same position. We invite you to give up all there is that you have that's worldly and lean into those spiritual situations. We want you to be part of the family of God. We want you to be part of those that on the end days when that trumpet sounds that you will go up. We're offering you salvation. We're offering you salvation to each and every one of you because the word says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's why you need Jesus in order to have salvation. We also invite you to come and be to rejoin us. Some of you might be out there thinking, well, I, I kind of messed up. I, I kind of doing things that I shouldn't do, and I don't think Jesus wants me back. Jesus never lets you go. So if you want to come back, you're coming back to him because he never, ever, ever left your side. So we're making two offers this morning. One is an offer for you to be born again, to be saved. The other offer is for you to recommit yourself here or anywhere, if you don't have a church that you left, maybe you left East Mount Zion and say, I don't want to go back to East Mount Zion. That's all right. It's not East Mount Zion. We are part of the body of Christ. You will see on the screen a number where you can call if you need an initial salvation or you can call if you want to be recommitted. We're offering this to you, for it is mine to offer and yours to accept. I hope this day was a good day for you. I hope this day was a spiritual blessed day. I hope you got something special as Pastor preached this morning because he's trying to let us know, all of us that's part of the church, that there's a job for us to do. There is something for us that we need to do to let this dying world know that we are representing Jesus the Christ. Jesus may not be here physically, but you see our legs, you see our feet, you see our arms, you see our hands, you listen to our pastor give out a word, we 
just want you to be blessed as we prepare to go for the rest of the week, as we prepare to do what it is that the God wants us to do to bring him glory. Let us just be blessed. Let us just understand that Jesus never leaves us. Finally, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen.